One small step for a man. One giant step. Hold the jokes, team. We got a lot of work to do here. Hello and welcome, or welcome back, to The Crust. Some of you may remember this game. I featured it during a Steam Next Fest back in October of 2023. And the game is finally getting ready to release here in early access in just a few days on July 15th, 2024. The developers, VM Studio and the publisher, Crytivo, have given me early access to the game to start featuring it for you here on my channel. And I would like to thank them for that. And also, uh, this is a version that's newer than uh, most people have seen so far. Um, this is version 0 0.92. And there are some new features in the game that, uh, that they've added for this one. So we're just going to go in though and kind of take a look and start playing through the game as we, as we would normally do. And, uh, if we hit some of those new features uh, soon in the next episode or two, that'll be great. If we don't, then we'll hit them when we hit them. Uh, the new features that I was given a list of are um, a new cargo robot, which is a separate unit, which transports large volumes of resources and collects regular. So this is a large, um, this is a large cargo robot. Um, expanded conveyor lift settings. So we not only have conveyor lifts in the game, we also have. Uh, filters and uh, opening and closing of entrances, exits, and things like that. Uh, expanded warehouse settings, priority assignment tool, um, conveyor outputs for large modules, new models of things, new POI generator, point of interest generator, which gives a variety of points of interest with different outcomes, quests, and player decisions, uh, which will be actually not quite available yet. Uh, a new module, which is a railgun for launching probes that can scan resources at the orbital level, which will be added in a new up an update coming soon. A uh, new model of a mobile drilling rig and some other various fixes and improvements. If you haven't seen this before, if you didn't see it when I featured it uh, last October or you haven't seen it from another content creator so far, it is a, uh, a lunar base factory builder. Uh, we're going to mine, craft, research, and trade resources with Earth uh, using er, in a narrative base builder format. So um, there's a bit of story, as the game, as the introduction there implies, uh, that we're going to get exposed to here as part of starting a new game. Um, and then we will, um, you know, have to see kind of uh, where we get more story as we go. Some of you may remember it. If you did remember it from before, you may remember that the uh, the tutorial and the in the um, the people you're interfacing with as part of the story are a little bit uh, were a little bit chatty. Like they would they were a little overly chatty, and it seems like they've cut that down just a bit, um, which is which is really 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 nice to to have. I don't think there's anything special. Oh yes, I need to turn on streamer mode here in the settings. Otherwise, there will be music that will be. Um, uh, possibly put on uh, as a you know a channel uh, issue with, with streaming and, and recording, but I think everything else I'm pretty much happy with settings wise. I did play with the sound a bit. Hopefully the sound is good for you. If not, we can make adjustments in future episodes. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and jump in and get started. So in addition to uh, the tutorial, which is as far as I can tell starts at basically the same exact point as the storyline. It just has more tutorial um, hints as we go, which I think I'm going to go ahead and do just so we can make sure that we all understand what's going on here. But there's also a sandbox mode, which which is interesting. We may have to try it out in the future. We're just going to go into the storyline via the tutorial here. That being one of the first tutorial pieces there, how to move the, the camera. Ready for launch. Over. Launch 
Station 1, Base MT4. Docking Gateway Provision Priority. Highest. Cost Crossing Route. Always in favor of HP-11. Priority launch and landing has been approved by Crust. Tranquilitatis Logistics to Incoming Transition. Please state your intentions. Over. Alice to MT Logistics. We have received clearance and hold a signed contract with Mr. Halloway for our mining operations in this designated sector. We're here to commence our activities as scheduled. Over. MT Logistics to Alice. We weren't informed of your early arrival. We've just finished building the elevator for your drones to access the underground facilities. At the moment, all the electricity is being used to charge the batteries as we prepare for night. We can't route power to the elevator right now. I suggest you keep your mining buddies in orbit for the next two weeks while we wait for the sun to come up, sweetheart. We made it here right on schedule, but waiting for the next morning on the moon? A whole two weeks of downtime? Is utterly unacceptable. This could jeopardize our entire mining contract. We need a better plan. And the name's Alice. Not sweetheart. Good afternoon, Director. This is Alice, your Vice President. We have a bit of a situation here, but I'm already on it. First, let's test our connection. Give this dialog box a click if you're hearing me loud and clear. Then we can proceed. Before we do, I just want to jump in because we've had a couple of cutscenes there. Um, so the game story is kind of already laid out for us as part of those cutscenes, and so uh, Alice here is our vice president. We're the director, and uh, Mr. Halloway will be a character as well as this um, this f so far faceless voice of the person we were talking. Uh, she's been talking to so far, um, and uh, let's just keep going. Connection solid. That's a start. Give me a few minutes to secure our landing clearance. Feel free to soak in the sights while you wait. I'm sure you have a great view of the moon from your orbital station. So, Robert, do we have a deal? Let me be clear. A two-week power outage equals job loss and a costly lawsuit for me. I don't care who you are, get Halloway on this. But no power for you and your toys until sunrise. We just don't have extra electricity right now. Look, Robert, you and I got off on the wrong foot. Our drones were originally designed for autonomous construction and repair, and we've brought the necessary resources. Grant us landing permission, and we'll handle the power situation ourselves. This benefits both of us. More solar panels for you, and we could land our toys and get going. They also can handle the repairs. So, should I update Mr. Holloway on our successful collaboration? All right, Alice, you have permission to land. Make sure your fancy drones don't break anything. Over and out. Director, it's your call. Permission to land has been granted. Show this Bob the Builder that we can fix this. Objective achieved. There's a couple of cargo pads. Choose to land the pods near the elevator. To do this, click on the notification on the left side of the screen and select an appropriate location. Director, your primary responsibility is to ensure resource extraction and processing in our logistics hub on the Sea of Tranquility. Currently, it depends on external supplies. If you can address this issue, even partially, rest assured, we'll secure long-term contracts for you in the years to come. I personally vouched for your mission to the board. I'd hate to send you home with nothing. Better help me convince these old-timers that you are a promising team, and your work is the future. Absolutely, Mr. Holloway. Both the Director and I are immensely grateful to you. Our focus is on establishing a long-term partnership, and we'll do our utmost to make it a reality. You can count on us. Okay, so we have to select these cargo pods, uh, one of which contains a bunch of stuff. 
and the other one contains a bunch of bots. So we're going to land those here in these sites as kind of directed. There we go. So I think, yeah, the bots get to deployed immediately. To get started, select the required modules on the construction panel and place their holograms on the moon's surface. The drones will perform all construction tasks automatically. So we'll go here. Director, and place the holograms of solar panels on the highlighted sites. Our drones will pick up necessary resources and begin construction. And so what annoyed me a little bit about this, because I did do this part of the demo or of the, the playthrough again, is that you don't, it doesn't tell you where to put them yet. You actually click on her uh, message again, and then it tells you where to put them. So it's kind of a little bit almost out of sequence. Like you don't necessarily know you want to click that last message before you place these things. Oh, and you can shift click to place, uh, to chain place like that. But they don't give you the sites, like the drop pod sites were there for a couple of dialogue boxes, but these weren't there until after we clicked that last message. So it's a little bit different, a little bit weird. Uh, consistency there would be kind of nice to have. And so they've uh, they've built one of them, and it'll join the the direction or come in the direction, the same direction as the other ones here, pointed toward the sun. And uh, they finished the next one. Looks like it. Working on delivering supplies. The third one. They do require a fair amount of stuff, uh, not too much, but mostly silicon, which makes sense given it's a solar panel. So two steel, three concrete, ten silicon, and one titanium. Uh, and they they will deliver all that and then I think four of them go and actually do the building task uh, And the rest of them then be, fall idle. Yeah, the rest of them fall idle All right, so last one's getting built now Objective achieved. Would you look at that they've actually built them not a bad start at all Alice, can you hear me your drones did a good job faster than I expected all the energy from these panels will go to you, but if you want to work at night, you need to take care of saving it now. For this, you're going to need some batteries. Well, thank you for your unwavering faith in our abilities, Robert. And I hope we've convinced you that we know what we're doing, and now our suddenly efficient drones will be busy building batteries. Director, he's absolutely right. A night on the moon is almost 14 and a half Earth days without the sun, and we do need batteries. Build four of them next to the solar panels. And again, with this one, you have to actually click away her message before you can build them. Uh, power, uh, batteries, and just match them up with those. I'm doing R to rotate once, and then we'll just click in place, just like we did the last ones. And then we also need to build a charging station, which it didn't actually tell us to do. But we're going to go ahead and build that anyway, and I'm going to put it in right here like this, I think. And that'll just be in their queue. And they, of course, build the things in the order that you place them. I think you can override the build order and, and force it to a higher or lower priority here if you want to do that. Looks like they're delivering some stuff here while also working on this, which is a little weird. Okay. Oh, maybe they were delivering while the one was doing some construction. Hmm, interesting. Okay. And the charging station? Objective achieved. Online. Well, well online. your drones really know how to build. Now use the wiring tool and connect the solar panels and batteries. Next, you just need to power up the elevator and you'll gain access to the underground level. Switch to the utilities mode and select the wiring tool. You can right click to quickly access the tool. Shift consecutive wiring. I do like these, how they pop up the videos of actual gameplay footage of how you do certain tasks. And you will see these a couple more times as tips, which is kind of nice. It must be part of the tutorial mode. Um, and so that's, that's, you know, kind of appreciated. If you click and just drag, you don't even have to click each time. You can just click and drag across, which is really nice. Uh, nice QOL type of thing here. Just drag across the machines and they will instantly be connected up and powered. Uh, let's go from here to there to well, here. Everything is up and go. running. Let's get down to business. Switch to the underground level by pressing tab. Objective achieved. There we go. Great. 
To start mining, build the drone configuration module. The elevator transfers power from the surface to the underground level. No need to worry about that. The other thing that I like is here in the task, it tells you um, where exactly to find this building, even if you're not following the arrows. So construction panel, which was the uh, the first thing I selected here, and then the mining, and then drone reconfiguration module here. Very, also a very nice QOL thing. Place that, and then it's going to want they're going to want me to power it. Um, also here on the right click menu, you have access to a few quick access things you're going to do a lot of. So mining, uh, wires, conveyors, as well as salvaging and prioritization. Really nice too. Little wheel menu there. I think it'll tell me that there's uh, that we need to wire it up once it's done being built. They still got to finish delivering all the resources. So they're getting the resources from upstairs, from up here. They're coming from here to the elevator, down the elevator, and popping out here. So it does take them a little bit of time to build the things down here compared to the supply of the things down here now compared to the things upstairs. The to power the module. And actually what I'm going to do with the wire is do this, and then I'm going to go from here to there to there. And that'll power all the rest of this stuff too. Uh, even though, well, yeah. Got it? Pardon my curiosity, but how are you going to extract Lunar Regolith with cargo robots? I'm far from a robotics expert, of course, but it seems like we have more questions than answers at this point. That's an excellent question, Robert, and I'd be delighted to answer it. <laughs> However, I need to wrap up some things first. The drone reconfiguration module allows up to five drones to be converted into mining drones and vice versa. So, uh... Click on that, and we just say uh, they want me to do four, so we we'll do four. Assign four of our existing now drones. Have the drones excavate an area measuring again. fifty yep. standard units. In the meantime, I'll have a chat with our curious Bob. So we can do this uh, via this tool here, or we can to do it via. The drones to start the evacuation. You okay, going to tell me. The highlighting tool and mark areas for digging. The mining drones will do the rest. Robert, to answer your question. Our company has been providing repair and maintenance services for robotics and mining equipment for over 10 years. Let us do an area there. Uh, you can also right click, of course, to choose the mining option. And then you can have them do a little bit here. Each sort of clicked uh, area that you that you select to mine is a paler, paler version of orange or peach or whatever color this is. Uh, that way you can kind of tell what the prioritization is of them and then it even goes in almost a greenish color there in the fourth one so they will do all of this one before they do this one before they do this one before they do that one in the order that i selected them we were involved in the development and maintenance of technology for lunar mining along with the first industrial expeditions to the moon even before the construction of the space elevator and the full-scale development of the moon by mankind and I'm pleased to inform you, Robert, that by pooling our vast experience, we have been able to develop and implement multifunctional drone technology that can be re-equipped for a variety of tasks. Did I answer your question in enough detail, or should I send you a set of materials for review? I can throw in a set of coloring books, especially for you, so you can quietly make your downtime in the workplace more enjoyable. Oh, the snark. All right, Alice, I get the hint. You do your job, and I'll mind my own business. By the way... I'll grab a few coloring books as souvenirs for the kids. I'll be heading home in about two weeks. All right, what fun. Director, I understand that I can be difficult at times, but your Alice is quite remarkable. She reminds me of my ex-wife. We're all still on the same channel, Robert. <laughs> so, uh, what's up with those coloring books? I'll send them to your wife along with some flowers. She's not likely to get them from her husband. All right, tutorial completed. Director, you have successfully completed the training. Continue the story campaign or go to the main menu and choose another mode. Seek a balance between survival and exploration. Experiment with different strategies and lead our company to success. We are counting on you. So even though this says to continue the, the campaign, I started the story mode alone after I did some of this, and it still started in the same spot. There may have been a little bit less chit-chat, chit but it started in the same spot. So I'm not sure really what the difference is. Probably just the chit chat part. So let's go ahead and continue the campaign. Wait, wait, we're getting distress signals from everywhere. Director. Ouch.
This is an emergency broadcast. We have detected an imminent asteroid collision with the moon's surface. We are currently assessing the extent of the damage and the number of casualties. At this moment, our teams are working tirelessly to restore communication with lunar outposts. For those still on the moon, be aware that we are mobilizing all available resources to assist you. Conserve your energy and ration your supplies until further notice. Additional information will be provided as the situation unfolds. Stay tuned for updates. Over and out. I repeat, Crust has declared a state of emergency of the first degree. Commercial shipments and cargo landings are prohibited. All complexes, resources, and facilities on the moon are now under Crust control. All remaining facilities should switch to emergency frequency and report their status. Conserve energy and resources and await further instructions. What's happening? Director, can you hear me? We're receiving reports that a meteorite collided with the moon and the state of emergency has been declared. Director, confirm you're on the line right now. You could have done it more quickly and spared me the worry. <laughs> Director, there's still no signal from the personnel of the base. I'll try again, but my hope is dwindling. Robert, come in. Robert, do you copy? Robert, damn it, come in. There appear to be no survivors. I'm glad you were on the orbital station when the collision happened. I suggest you stay there as long as possible. We should try to hold out until logistics with Earth are restored. Start with electricity. We still have resources and functional drones. That should be enough for a few solar panels and batteries. All right. So five solar panels, five batteries. Uh, put them here in line. Uh, we're going to have to do, unfortunately, the uh, small solar panels. So we'll do those, and they, they can fit in here a little bit tighter if we want to make them a little bit tighter. I don't see why we need the spacing. So I'm just going to put them uh, right up next to each other. You can't build here. I know. Relax. But I'll, these I will match because these are the same size, so I'll match them over here. Although I do have one extra. That's okay, though. And then uh, we'll have to wire them up, of course, uh, whether it tells us to do it now. By the seismic activity, the meteorite impact occurred on the far side of the moon. We're lucky it happened so far away Oops. from our mission. But the strength of the blast wave raises a lot of questions. There we go. Connecting all those together. Is that all the head of the research department can say? Somewhere far away, there was an explosion, and we don't know the cause? Because scientists are working with proven facts, not speculating on fragmentary evidence. Much more data would be needed to reach the conclusions. Okay, and I think we'll probably want to do maybe like some kind of power grid type of thing like this. I'm going to make them straight lines here. And then maybe go from there to here, I'm guessing. We have electricity, okay. but our resource reserves are almost depleted. We need to restore production as soon as possible. Let's start with repairing the elevator to gain access to the underground level. Then build a charging station for the drones. Make sure that elevator and charging station are connected to the power network. All right, so let's repair, and then we'll go ahead and get that charging station started here. Because why not? And I think I'll put that over here, maybe kind of facing the elevator. And then we'll need some more power here. Director, we're getting word of supply shortages from almost everywhere on Earth. The explosion cut off most of the supply channels from the moon. Millions of people are in need of resources, and we can satisfy that demand. Supplies used to run through the contract system, but it came to a complete halt after the explosion. We might be able to fix that. Interesting that, you know, they're running out of supplies everywhere on the moon, or everywhere on Earth, when this just happened. And as far as I can tell, At least, uh, power. The explosion destroyed everything on the surface, but there may still be mining modules underground. We need to go down and see what we have left. 
as far as I can tell, at least, why would why would supplies be cut that short that fast of everything? Like, we're not growing food on the moon, as far as I can tell. So I don't know. Director, we need to reconnect the power supply to the underground level. Connect the elevator and electrical pole with wires so we can see the scale of the damages. Okay, and we'll do a wire here again. That's better. I see that we have a module to produce smart concrete, but we have an urgent need to resume production of steel and silicone. Director, I have an idea. First, convert five drones into miners, and we'll proceed. The drone reconfiguration module allows up to five drones to be converted into mining drones and... We have yeah, smelting that. furnaces, but to start producing any resource, the relevant oxides are always needed. We will now mine them with the mining drone. Director, we have access to iron and silicone veins. Assign drones to mine the resources from the veins to supply the processing modules with raw materials. So we have iron oxide over here. Enter excavation mode and assign mining drones to mine resources directly from a vein. All right, so excavation mode, and we can just assign a couple of drones to this one and a couple of drones to this one. Objective and achieved. That gives us uh, iron and silicon. You can now watch mining drones extract the oxides and working drones deliver them to the smelting furnace. One of the interesting things is even though this is a silicon deposit, it does have trace amounts of other minerals and uh, resources. So um, every once in a while, you'll actually see iron, titanium, aluminum, or water pop out also from their mining efforts. Uh, from that silicon and from the iron, you'll see titanium, silicon, aluminum, and water also pop out in trace amounts as well. So there's and the rest, I guess the rest of that number would be regolith because that doesn't add up to 100%. That's um, 65%. So I'm not sure what the other 35% is. What does this one add up to? Yeah, so right there already is iron oxide from the titanium. That's about 70% adds up to. So yeah, it's kind of weird. So you need to produce 20 steel and, and thir uh, 20 silicon. We already had the steel, so uh, we could probably knock this down by one. Oh, we have access to the game's the game speed settings as well. One, two, three, and hotkeys are using these buttons and the pause up there. And that will help uh, help us get production a little bit more stable. So we could take maybe one of these miners off of this and load this one down with miners. And that way we can speed up the silicon uh, mining, which will speed up the production. We do have these, um, these smelting furnaces here. This one is configured to take in silicon oxide, which is what we're mining, and uh, produce silicon... Um, I don't know, tubes or bars or units or whatever. And this one takes an iron oxide and produces steel. Oops. Keep doing the right click thing. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna want to balance that back out again, but we might as well make silicon a bit faster. I'm also going to speed the game up to uh, maximum speed here, times four, just to kind of get through this step and in as little time as we can reasonably do so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it looks like this is keeping up. It converts nine into three, so it is keeping up a bit with the uh, demand here. This is nine to three also. Um, so, like, they're able to... They're not even able to keep up with feeding it, even with four miners uh, mining. Unless there's a bunch of chunks sitting on the ground over here. There's some Director, water ice. Director, you can never have too much smart concrete, so it's worth spending time to produce it. For this purpose, we have a pressing module, which may not be the most efficient way, but it's good enough to start with. The pressing module requires only regolith, which is a type of lunar dirt plentiful here. Assign mining drones to the evacuation so that we have the resources we need. Free drones will deliver the regolith to production themselves. Okay, so let's, let's take these down a bit uh, to maybe two of them there. And we need to mine out more of the regolith again, just the chunks like we did in the tutorial bit. Um, so that we can uh, so that we can provide some just generic regolith to this pressing module which will turn 10 uh, regolith into two smart concrete and it actually has connected to it an input belt and an input uh, resource storage here bulk resource storage kind of similar to what you have like in captain of industry where you have the the bucket for the loose the loose materials versus the the, the buildings for storing the the uh, solid stuff. Um, 
and so or the you know the unit type stuff and so this uh, they'll deliver here instead of delivering directly to the machine which will then uh, feed via the conveyor belt in and we'll be able to set more of those up once we have conveyor belts unlocked for our own construction and everything so we need to produce 35 smart concrete I'm gonna go ahead and kick it up to maximum again I wanted to I do want to keep some of these on mining. So we've got one there. We've got two here. We could probably actually slow this one down by one and maybe speed this one up by one. I think I'll let them do the regolith because we need that more. And so if you were wondering also, the rest of the bots that we have available to us are currently just cargo shipping stuff from the ground to wherever it needs to go, whether it's the regolith here or the oxides at either of these sites, uh, and they're delivering them to the three places they need to be delivered to. That's why they're zooming back and forth. It's kind of interesting that they have you make 35. That's quite a bit considering, um, you know, what you're kind of tasked with doing here, but uh, I guess it's okay. Wait, I took them all out of that? I guess I did. Did I want to take them all out of that? Hmm... Maybe not. How are we doing as far as keeping up with uh, demand here? Uh, paused on me. Director, oh, that's why. here's the latest news regarding contracts. To resume shipments to Earth, we'll need to restore communication and significantly expand production. If we manage this in the near term, I'll negotiate an extremely lucrative contract with the aerospace company FASM. They've lost their supplier and are willing to pay generously for an urgent order. I'm still looking into the matter, but be prepared to devote all resources to this effort if you want to maximize the benefits. I'll return as soon as new information becomes available. All right. So they're still a little interrupty, uh, for sure, um, but they're not as bad as they were, from my memory at least, in that demo. Go ahead and have them do a bit more of this excavation as well. Oh, that was maybe been a bit much there. That's fine. We'll just do it anyway. You can. Uh, Remove it, um, erase selected area, so I can do like that if I wanted to, you know, take out the excess a little bit. Um, so that that is an option. We're getting nearly there, and then we can probably reassign some miners back to this. Uh, we're still at around the same amount. We might actually be up a little bit, so maybe I can put one more miner back into this, to at least to keep that going uh, over time here. And so they're out mining around a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is an impenetrable area. I'm not entirely sure what that does or means, but there's well, a few of those a areas. Learned. There should be enough smart concrete for the first time. Okay. Director, we have a message on the emergency channel. I'll put it on the screen. Protection. This is Arthur Moore, commander of the Hope 2 orbital station. The station has sustained severe damage from multiple collisions. We have lost key control modules. A hard moon landing will occur in the coming weeks. Request assistance from anyone who hears this message. All crew members are ordered to take shelter in Block 4. I repeat. Over the from the meteorite impact must have gotten Hope 2. I'm already contacting Crust to report it. Director, my name is Clyde Draper, and I lead the Crust Search and Rescue Operation. We are aware of the situation with Hope 2, and are already developing an evacuation plan. There's still a chance to restore resource mining and production at your facility, and it's in our mutual interest for you to assist us. We need a place to accommodate the rescued crew, and your base is the most suitable candidate for this. Crust will provide you with the necessary equipment and scientific resources to carry out the assigned tasks. I need some advice. With all due respect, Director, I do not share your doubts. People are in danger, and if it's in our power to help them, we must do so. With all due respect, Alice, altruism has clouded your judgment. Crust is clearly asking for grant aid that we cannot afford right now. I suggest we focus on restoring production and resuming shipments to Earth. Where resources are urgently needed right now. Also, I've negotiated a prepayment with FASM. We can use their funds if we start re-establishing the contract system now. But all you care about is profit. If that's the case, think of the technology Crust will provide. It's worth as much as our base in its current state. 
Do we pay a fair price for their technology? Don't forget, Director, by accepting Crust's offer, we will allow them to decide how our base is developed. We'll have to focus on the construction of the living quarters and postpone the expansion of high-tech manufacturing and investigation of the meteorite case. Crust is going to accommodate the surviving Hope 2 crew members at your base in exchange for equipment and technologies for us to carry out a rescue mission. If you accept Crust's offer, you will lose access to the FASM contract, for which the corporation is willing to pay up front. So now we get our first major decision in the game, um, and this is where you would probably play through the story at least twice, once to try it one way, once to try it the other way, just to kind of see what the differences are. Um, you know, for me, it's kind of a, you know, I want both, of course, um, but I think we'll we'll accommodate the station crew at the base. And for this, we get uh, 60 of each of the three, and those are the three science uh, sciences, for 180 days um, and we have to we'd have to do it uh, but we it's it's actually work in progress and it's high difficulty so maybe we don't want to do that one the other option is we can focus on restoring supply deliveries to earth where we um, where it's a normal difficulty uh, task and we get a hundred thousand credits and access to the contract system so I mean, the altruism is nice, and it would be kind of a good thing to do for this, but I think we should stick with this since this is still a work in progress and save this one for a later um, a later playthrough and instead do the uh, re continue focusing on restoring supply deliveries to Earth. I hear you. Crust is capable of organizing a rescue operation independently, but the explosion damaged the system for communicating with the nearest facilities. You need communication for full operations on the moon and we need it to rescue the crew of Hope 2. Your base is the closest to the repeater, and we can provide the equipment for the repairs. It's a mutually beneficial proposal, Director, but I understand if you want to discuss it with your colleagues again. So we're giving another option, even though we're not going to accommodate the, uh, the the crew of the station. We can either just take this offer right off or we can give some advice. For the purposes of playing through the story, I'm going to go ahead and take the advice. If we decide to resume supplying, we'll need to interact with others to share the resources. And to do so, we have to establish communication. Now, fixing a repeater is no big deal, but the crust equipment isn't just lying around. We've already been offered it twice. There may not be a third time. Crust is requesting your assistance in restoring the communication system on the moon in exchange for equipment to perform work on the transponder. Yeah, and so we basically have no choice but to take the offer, but it, it looks like it benefits us anyway, so let's take the offer. Pleasure doing business with you. We'll send you the rover scout and the coordinates for the repeater shortly. Over and out. Don't call me cynical, but the best we can do under the current circumstances is try to salvage the equipment that miraculously survived. Well, let's not waste any time. Professor, you prepared a research plan before starting the expedition, didn't you? Absolutely. First, we need to increase production. We have smelting furnaces, but we need extractors and refineries to extract the oxides. Put a couple more miners on those for now. I should have done that earlier. So, now we need to do some research. Uh... Director, research underground mining and place two extractors on the iron and silicon veins. Your space there. All right, so we have research down here, um, and we have again those three types of research, those three vials there: uh, blue, orange, and green. Um, and for right now, we only have the orange one, which is the engineering one. So we can only do these types of researches. But over time, we will actually get access to the other ones. So uh, we need to unlock underground mining, which is down here, and that's going to take a day to do. So we can do that. One of the interesting things, which we'll actually get to do later, is um, we will once we have multiple of these sciences, we can actually do their research in parallel. Just kind of an interesting uh, way to way to design the uh, the, the research uh, trees, but I like it. All right, so you're still mining this stuff, which is fine. I don't know where my that must be you. Yeah, that's you. Okay, I don't know where you were just now, but you're out doing something. Uh, we have this over here that you're still mining out, but that's an Im oh, a basalt. That's what it is. Uh, hard, it requires hard rock drilling to get through. Okay. We'll take care of that later. Production storages are full, so production can't continue. That must be this. Yeah, it's full. It's a little full. That's fine. And uh, so they can they can start working more on uh, 
iron and silicon. Uh, but as we mine more of the regolith, they'll just deliver it here and we'll store it up in there and then we'll have it for later. Uh, there's some sort of ore there that we don't know about what it is yet. Uh, build an extractor on veins. We gotta, okay, we got to finish this research, which is 85% done. Let's go ahead and go super speed here real quick. There we are. Research complete. Thank you. And then we'll build the extractors. Uh, here. Uh, mining and regular extractors. And those just get built kind of right here on the node. Uh, you can rotate it if you want. Um, it looks like there's a possibility where some things count and some things don't, but it tells you how many cells are overlapped. So you obviously want to make sure that there are there are nine overlapped cells. So we'll just go right there and then we'll do the other one. I don't should have held on shift. That extractors need electricity. Hold down shift to build a chain of utility poles. Okay. Uh, let's do this one like this, I think. And overlap nine cells, good. And then we need power poles, of course. Uh, we could do it the other way, but uh, we'll do this this way with wires. And we'll just click there and hold down shift. Um, and we're just going to head right toward this one right here. More or less. That. And then we'll take this one over here. And this way. Oh, it'll work. Okay, it'll connect. Nice. And then they'll build those poles after they build the, uh, the extractors. Um, so we have 100 science left. Uh, we don't know what we need to use it for yet, so we'll wait. I know no research selected. I was just going in there to be nosy. Uh, let's go to fast speed again just to get these constructions done. And again, they're having to go up to the surface to get some things. Uh, some things are here, but other things not. So the components and microcircuits are up on the surface. And the other two things are down here because we're actually making them down here. All right, so we have this now. Uh, it needs more power. we got to finish the power poles. Finish the power poles. Watching them climb there. Okay, we should have power now. I see in the data that the extractors have started mining. Now, finish the research and build two regolith refineries for producing iron and silicon, respectively. Okay, regolith refineries. Those are right here. They cost 180. We only have 100, so we must be unlocking some or gaining some as time goes by. Wasting science points? What does that mean? So these are extracting. Uh, they're extracting regolith still. Um, they don't actually extract the ore directly. They actually extract regolith from the ore. And then I guess we get... Um, we get the ability for other things later. Interesting. They're delivering to here. They're not delivering to, to these because they're not extracting... Silicon or iron oxides. That must be what the refineries are for. Right, we'll do this research. We'll go into super fast mode and finish that up. Research complete. Director, place the regolith refineries similarly to optimize future production. All right. Let's uh, build uh, production. Reg oh, nope, smelting furnace. Maybe it's over here in mining. Regolith refinery. There we are. So we'll go here. I don't, although maybe I don't want to build on whatever that resource node is. Maybe I'll push it over here just a bit. One there and one over here. Maybe there. I have suspicion as to what that is, but I won't uh, do anything with it. Refinery extracts the necessary oxides from the regolith by thermal treatment. The process leaves slag that can also be used in production. Oh, handy. And we're gonna need power here, so let's do um, power. Why is right click not working? Okay, I'll do it this way then. Get those powered in. 
Five mining drones idle. Yeah, that's because they've mined everything out. That's fine, though. I don't know what to research next, so hopefully we aren't wasting too many uh, things. I mean, we definitely want to have multi-regulate refinery. Handy. Uh, ore detectors and conveyor belts, but if I pick one, then the game might have me pick the opposite. Objective achieved. The Synchron Regolith Refinery is a mono-refinery that can only produce one type of oxide at a time. Be sure to select the recipes for iron and silicon oxide to start production. Alrighty, so we'll do uh, iron oxide here, because that's the steel one over there. And we'll do silicon oxide here, which is over here for silicon. Director, a conveyor belt will speed up production and eliminate the need for drones in a resource delivery. I advise you to keep an eye on this technology. Okay. You heard him, Director. Now we have a steel production chain, but we can increase its efficiency by connecting the modules with conveyor belts. It will reduce the load for drones and speed up production. Exactly what we need right now. All right, so this one is producing, for every 20 units of regolith that are delivered to it, it produces 6 units of slag and 11.1 .1 units of silicon oxide. And this one is 20 producing 6.4 and 5.8 uh both in one minute so you kind of get a uh you know a measurement of speed and efficiency here i just noticed also there's a sort of calendar thing over here that shows you where you're at in the day night cycle here on the moon so it looks like we i don't know are either just past half or just coming up to a halfway point Let's uh, go super speed again to get through this as best we can. I'm guessing we're just past half, given the date. That's uh, January 26th. Although, I think the date at the very beginning when I was talking about the elevator was June. So we're actually here before Research complete. the elevator's complete. Interesting. Use the conveyor tool and, and connect extractor to refinery and smelting furnace. This way, the resource... Rich Regolith will go into a refiner without needing to engage drones. Optimization at its best. All right, so that's here. We can also access it from the right-click menu here. And we need to basically just run a belt from this spot here all the way into this spot here. And we can do so um, automatically. It'll, it'll auto-path it. If you don't like the path that it picks, well, you can do your own path if you want. And we can just build all, and it'll start the belt construction there. And then we want to do this one to that one, because this is the oxide output. The other two are slag outputs into here and build that. And then we want to do this one, of course, uh, down into here. Really, you went that way? Look at that craziness right there. All right. Uh, you can also alt-click to do a section at a time. Maybe that's better. Wait. Huh? No, that's not just a section at a time. Uh... Okay, I don't care. It's fine. Uh, click and then build. Okay, then we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll build again. We have we have belts. Director, we belts are instant build. The by research the way. rover scout. It's essential for your mission. Examine the satellite repeater and activate it by any means possible. Mr. Ratchet will help you sort out the controls. You're free to use data that will help the mission. Some of it will expedite the research. Professor Wilfrey knows what to do with it. However, remember that all ship logs, crew records, and other materials related to the incident are the property of Crust. Sus. Your company has no authority to examine this information. Over and out. All right, so we need to Ratchet, land the rover. Did you hear? Crust put you in charge of the new toy. Don't mess it up. They won't give us another one. I wouldn't laugh at that if I were you. We're sending an expensive machine off base where the satellite link doesn't work. If we lose it, well... Anyway, Director, let's get back to work. Land the cargo pod with the rover and we'll continue. Did it tell me where it wants me to put it? No, okay, so we can land it wherever we want. Well, there's some blue and some red, so we're kind of limited there, I guess. But we'll go right there.
objective achieved. Mm, Horizon 6. Almost everything has been modified. Only the hull is original. Uh, there's serious hardware there. Even Crust doesn't have much like it. Send it off base and see what we can find with it. All right, so now we need to uh, click on the rover and select leave the base. So we'll do that. A little slow. Mm, I see an exclamation point up here. Oh, we're actually getting some, some of the science in. Uh, I'm trying to tell if that's... I think it's moving this way. So I think we're coming out into the daytime again. Now let's go a little faster here. Get a lot faster here. Objective achieved. Alright, now we need to go to the global map, which is here. Objective achieved. Uh-huh. And Trust examine the repeater. The coordinates of the repeater. Let's send the rover there and try to deal with that piece of junk. So we'll go there. Uh, we need to set Colleagues, an expedition. Oh, hello. I'll remind you that we already received payment for the FASM contract, but haven't started fulfilling it yet. We need to hurry up to avoid damaging our reputation as a reliable supplier. Uh-huh. Set an expedition. In this case, we need to research and build a landing platform. Okay. Set an expedition. Uh, so we're going to go to the repeater. We know that. And we need to select a transport, which is the scout rover. And then we can investigate it uh, there. And that will be uh, that'll be running for the next. Director, I consider bit. it my duty to remind you that lunar research is divided into three main fields: fundamental, engineering, and social. Each laboratory is capable of conducting independent research, but studying certain technologies may require the cooperation of multiple fields. All available research is grouped into three main directions: fundamental engineering, and social. Fundamental research is responsible for logistics and communication with other organizations, as well as drone improvements. Engineering research helps develop mining and production. Social research ensures that colonists at the base live and work comfortably. Okay. Some research requires multiple types of science points at once. You can assign tasks in different sections, and then the research plan will be conducted in parallel. The speed of research depends on your science points' income. All right. You can always rearrange your research to actualize the priorities for your current goals. So we need to have a landing, uh, landing platform research. That'll take a little bit of time, and it's quite expensive. Uh, but we are gaining some science from the rover, it appears, uh, as well as uh, also from Earth. Uh, in the case of the engineering science, uh, no production or consumption of the social yet. And I'm just going to go ahead and start spending some of this um, other as well, because we have plenty of it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the geophysical prospecting for later. And that'll come into this slot. But I think it's going to it should actually continue or should actually start running because it's a separate uh, discipline. It's a separate, separate set of research. So it is actually running. You can see it progressing there. It only has a few days of, of execution to go. But we're going to leave this here for right now. I'm going to pause, actually. We're going to leave this here for right now, and in the next episode, we will continue this. Um, we'll get out to that, uh, that research point, and we will continue the story, continue the game, and see what else comes comes along and happens to us as we, uh, as we continue progressing here. So, thank you all for joining me. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.